गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स आवर टूडेज टॉपिक इज साइक्लिक एंड नॉन साइक्लिक फोटो फॉस्फोरिलेशन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स हैव द एबिलिटी ऑफ एक्सट्रैक्टिंग एनर्जी फ्रॉम ऑक्सीडाइजेबल सब्सटांसिस एंड स्टोर दिस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ बॉन्ड एनर्जी स्पेशल सब्सटांसिस लाइक ए टी पी कैरी दिस एनर्जी इन दियर केमिकल बॉन्ड्स इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स द एनर्जी ए टी पी प्रोवाइड्स एनर्जी द प्रोसेस थ्रू विच ए टी पी इज सिंथिसाइज बाय सेल्स इज कॉल्ड फॉस्फोरिलेशन दिस सिंथिस कैन अकर इन माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया एंड क्लोरोप्लास्ट सो द प्रोसेस ऑफ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ ए टी पी इज नोन एज फॉस्फोरिलेशन बिकॉज फॉस्फोर इन ए डी पी फॉस्फोरस एड्स एंड देन ए टी पी इज फॉर्म so this process is known as phosphorylation and if this process occurs in the presence of light then this is known as photophosphorylation so photophosphorylation is the synthesis of atp from adp and inorganic phosphate in the presence of light that is important when the two photosystem works in a series first ps2 and then the ps1 a process is called non cyclic photophosphorylation as we have seen in z scheme of light reaction there non cyclic photophosphorylation occur that is the formation of atp occurs but this is not in the cyclic form this is in non cyclic form the electron will not return to its position that is non cyclic photophosphorylation the two photosystems are connected through an electron transport chain as seen earlier in z scheme both atp and nadph are synthesized by this kind of electron flow under non cyclic photophosphorylation atp as well as nadph is formed both are energy rich compounds when only ps1 is functional the electron is circulated within the photosystem and the phosphorylation occurs due to cyclic flow of electrons as shown in the figure in the cyclic phosphor photophosphorylation the electron excite there is electron acceptor then this electron comes back to the again p7 molecule of the chlorophyll through electron transport chain in this atp is formed a possible location where this could be happening is in stroma lamellae ps1 system works in stroma lamellae while the membrane or lamella of the grana in the grana thylakoids are present where the two thylakoids are joined in that part that is known as oppressed part where do, both are joined both thylakoids are joined together in that part ps2 as well as ps1 system work the stroma lamellae membrane lacks ps2 because it their nadp reductase enzyme is also absent the excited electron does not pass on to nadp but is cycled back to the ps1 complex through electron transport chain in ps1 that electron come back to the p uh, chlorophyll molecule to the complex the cyclic flow hence results only in the synthesis of atp but not of nadph cyclic photophosphorylation also occurs when only light of wavelength beyond 680 nanometer are available for excitation so ps1 works when light more than 680 nanometers that is p700 is present wave wavelength of 700 is present and ps2 works when that is of 680 nanometer i hope this is clear next is chemi osmotic hypothesis the chemi osmotic hypothesis has been put forward to explain the mechanism that how 
actually atp is synthesized in the chloroplast that how atp is produced that is explained by chemi osmotic hypothesis the chemi osmotic hypothesis in this the the work is according to the proton gradient like in respiration in photosynthesis too atp synthesis is linked to the development of a proton gradient across a membrane like in respiration in photosynthesis also in chloroplast proton gradient also develops this time these are the membranes of the thylakoid the proton gradient develop in the membranes of the thylakoid inside the thylakoid more protons are there more h ions are there and outside less h ions in the stoma region so there is there is one difference though here the proton gradient grad, proton accumulation is towards the inside of the membrane that is in the lumen in the photosynthesis the proton accumulates inside the lumen of the thylakoid lumen means inside the inside of the thylakoid is known as lumen so in photosynthesis proton accumulates in the lumen of the thylakoids but in respiration protons accumulate in the inner membrane space of the mitochondria when electrons move through the ets electron transport system so this question can be asked tell the difference in the proton gradient in respiration and photosynthesis let us now understand what causes the proton gradient across the membrane we need to consider again the processes that take place during the activation of electrons and their transport to determine the steps that cause proton gradient to develop so first point is splitting of water molecules takes place on the inner side of the membrane the proton or hydrogen ion that are produced by the splitting of water accumulates within the lumen of the thylakoid as already we have studied that when water breaks it forms h ions and oxygen here the h ions are transferred into the lumen of the thylakoid and oxygen is released leave the second point b part c is the nadp reductase enzyme is located on the stoma side of the membrane in the stoma nadp enzyme is present reductase enzyme is present along with electrons that come with the acceptor of the elect electrons of ps1 protons are necessary for the reduction of nadp to nadph these proteins are also removed from the stoma in the stoma side nadp is present nadp reductase enzyme is present which convert nadp into nadph for this proton protons are required and that protons are taken from the stoma grana or grana or thylakoids are present in the stoma stoma is the matrix of the chloroplast inside the lumen more h ions and outside in the stoma less h ions so this causes a difference in the protons inside the lumen and outside the stoma because of this difference when h ions from the lumen goes out into the stoma through atpas enzyme atp generation occurs so this is the process how atp is produced again in the stoma more h ions are present in the membrane of the thylakoid photosystem 2 is working during photosystem 2 the water breaks h ions are released these h ions are shifted in the lumen of the thylakoid again proton pump is present which transfer the protons from the stoma into the lumen of the thylakoid then these electrons are shifted to the photosystem 1 the as we have already studied in the z scheme from the ps2 it goes to the ps1 then this electron help in the formation of nadp to nadph for this process again h ions are used from the stroma 
now more h ions are in the lumen when h ions pass and in the membrane of the thylakoid this atpase enzyme is present in the atpase enzyme consists of two parts cf0 and cf1 also known as f0 or f1 f0 part is in the membrane is present inside the membrane and f0 is outside the membrane when a chain moves through this atpase enzyme generation of atp occurs clear so hence within the chloroplast protons in the stroma decreases in number while in the lumen there is accumulation of protons this creates a proton gradient across the thylakoid membrane as well as a measurable decrease in ph of the lumen when more h ions in the lumen it decreases the ph of the lumen now question arises why are we so interested in the proton gradient or what is the importance of proton gradient the gradient is important because it is the breakdown of this gradient that leads to the release of energy when the protons moves from inside to the outside that's at that time atp production is there this gradient is broken down due to the movement of protons across the membrane of the membrane to the stroma through the transmembrane channel of the f0 of the atpase the atpase enzyme consists of two parts one is called the f0 is embedded in the membrane and forms a transmembrane channel that carries out facilitated diffusion of proton across the membrane facilitated diffusion means diffusion with the help of some molecule so here atpas help in the transfer of protons from the lumen into the stroma the breakdown of the gradient provides enough energy to cause a conformational change in the f1 particles of the atpas which makes the enzyme synthesize several molecules of energy packed atp so in this process in this movement atp generation occurs now important paragraph chemi osmosis requires what are the conditions what is the things required for chemi osmosis it requires a membrane a proton pump which will shift the protons from the stroma to the lumen a proton gradient gradient means more proton should be inside the lumen and less should in the stroma and atp is that is the enzyme energy is used to pump protons across the membrane to create a gradient or a high concentration of protons within the thylakoid lumen so when we transport the protons from stroma to the lumen some energy is used atp is a has a channel that allows diffusion of protons back across the membrane from the atp is again a chain comes into the stroma this releases enough energy to activate atp is enzyme to form a for the formation of atp so along with the nadph produced by the movement of electrons the atp will be used immediately in the biosynthetic reaction taking place in the stroma the atp which is produced here is used in the for in the form in the biosynthetic reaction that is responsible for fixing carbon dioxide and synthesis of sugars so here sugar formation occurs i hope this is clear thank you